Death of a Naturalist All year the flax dam festered in the heart of the townland. Green and heavy-headed, flax had rotted there, weighted down by huge sods. Daily it sweltered in the punishing sun. Bubbles gargled delicately. Blue bottles wove a strong gauze of sound around the smell. There were dragonflies, spotted butterflies. But best of all was the warm, thick slobber of frog spawn that grew like clotted water in the shade of the banks. Here, every spring, I would fill jam potfuls of the jellied specks to range on window sills at home, on shelves at school, and wait and watch until the fattening dots burst into nimble swimming tadpoles. Miss Walls would tell us how the daddy frog was called a bullfrog and how he croaked, and how the mammy frog laid hundreds of little eggs, and this was frog spawn. You could tell the weather by frogs too, for they were yellow in the sun and brown in rain. Then, one hot day, when fields were rank with cow dung in the grass, the angry frogs invaded the flax dam. I ducked through hedges to a coarse croaking that I hadn't heard before. The air was thick with a bass chorus. Right down the dam, gross-bellied frogs were cocked on sods. Their loose necks pulsed like sails. Some hopped. The slap and plop were obscene threats. Some sat poised like mud grenades, their blunt heads farting. I sickened, turned and ran. The great slime kings were gathered there for vengeance and I knew that if I dipped my hand, the spawn would clutch it.